That's okay. Okay. I'm so freaking excited to have you guys on. We're excited as well. Us. Um, so, uh, so I found out you, from you guys, from Mary Jennings, she's a good friend of mine as well. And, um, so, so I have a couple of questions for you guys. To, so how did yeah, you sure. guys, how did you guys start the band? Sorry. Uh, I think there. you, um, yeah, I cut out a little bit there. Do you want me to say it again? Yes. Yeah, yeah. How did you guys start the band? Uh, well, back in, I think it was probably 2017, um, Leah and myself, we've been friends for a really long time, and we both come from Connecticut, and we were just kind of hanging out, not really doing anything in Nashville, and Leah was like, we're going to play a show. And I was like, what do you mean we're going to play a show? We don't have a band. We don't really have any songs, maybe two of them. So we ended up um, asking a couple friends to play with us. And we just kind of threw together this one show. Um, the person that we asked to play bass on that show is still playing bass for us. Uh, that's Owen. Um, and yeah, we I, had a really I think good it was a show. It was uh, Kristen Ford, right? That actually got, and that's how I know Kelsey was uh, started playing with us. But I'm, I'm, I think Kristen Ford actually reached out to me and saw, like, saw maybe my singing videos or guitar playing on Facebook, and somebody gave them gave her my name, and uh, and Lauren and I had a previous uh, previously played music in Connecticut, so she's always my go to music person. <laughs> so it kind of just took off from there. Now, how did you get Mary Jennings to come along? Oh, that's a sweet story. I think we were going to play a show in March of 2020. And we wanted to add some keys at that time. And it was just going to be for one show. Does that sound right? I, it, that feels like forever ago. Um, it's been a few years. It was something like that where we were just going to ask Mary to just like play this one show with us. And then uh, literally the, the night of the tornado before the tornado hit, Mary was, was playing a show at the East Room and we went and saw her and we got down on one knee and, and band proposed to her and <laughs> asked if she would be in our band. But, you know, we've kind of I mean, I've I've known Mary pretty much since probably for like 11 years now. And so she's just kind of been a fixture in our lives for a long time. And she's been a fan and she's helped us out. And thank God she said yes, because she's awesome. So glad she's in the band. I can't mm -hmm. imagine the songs without her now. It's I know. Like yeah. the, the depth of like that synth that comes with our songs now is just, I don't know, you can't go without yeah, her. She was our missing piece. Yeah. It's something yeah. that I always, always wanted to add was synth. And I think like it was just, it was meant to be. Well, she's a good part of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. yeah. So who, who's like your influence? Hmm. Who wants to go? You go, Lee. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, I think us like growing up as like '90s kids and uh, going to high school in the early 2000s. I mean, it's definitely Blink 182 and like Paramore coming, you know, n shorter after that. Um, but I actually, I don't know. I guess some of I don't. I'm not sure if it translates, but my favorite band was Third Eye Blind, and so like I think that some of like like enough is kind of having that like uh cool music things that we do like at the end of the song it kind of reminds me of that yeah i think we definitely have it a, we definitely in, are influenced by the 90s as a whole of a band for sure a little bit of like a mix of like 90s grunge rock alternative mixed with some 2000s emo at least that is definitely a, a solid answer i would say cranberries i I, mm. I think we all oh, kind of yes. have this like subconscious 
vibe of the cranberries that kind of makes its way into our music. And I know this is kind of maybe a funny one, but I feel like one of the early influences of me and Liam making music together is definitely Maroon 5. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like the first album. And um, The Clicks. Totally. Tegan and Sarah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're good music. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, I love that sound kind of that kind of music um yeah we we have a variety we we all listen to different stuff and i think like we have a little bit of ear candies from different genres in there that's cool so what's the process of writing songs together oh god (laughs) uh well you go ahead, Kels. I was going to say, there's been a few different ways we've come up with songs. Obviously, when Lee and Lauren started kind of founding this band together, they already had a lot of content coming with them as the band formed. Um, from as a band member that came into the band early on in their Nashville days, um, just I see the chemistry that Lee and Lauren have as writers together is awesome. And we've got a lot of content out of that and then with the current lineup of the band uh, um it's also been really cool to see how well we all together have been able to craft some of our newer songs and some of you know everyone's different i guess methods of songwriting have brought different little flares into how we write songs Yeah, definitely. I think like, kind of like Kelsey said, uh, for a long time, it was, you know, Leah and I have been pals for a long time, and we know each other really well. And we've done some songwriting together over the years. I don't want to say a lot, but a majority of the songwriting I've done has been with Leah. Um, So Leah and I have gotten together over the years many times. And written songs together but actually what was it like two years ago almost the six of us did a cabin writing retreat and we all six together contributed to writing our song assembly line boys on that trip so that was a really cool process so we've been i feel like kind of trying to write with like four people in the room or something now yeah and then when we, I mean, most of the time, I mean, like I'll either have a concept or Lauren will have a concept and we'll bring it to everybody and we'll just kind of create something as we're playing it. I mean, there's a lot of like, there's six different minds in the room and like everybody's contributing and like, oh, it'd be cool if we did this. So it's all kind of like a collective Totally. That sounds awesome. Well, I I do I do my own stuff. I do spoken word on the side. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and I that's do really have, cool. And I do have a couple of new songs coming out, so that's a very exciting. So. Oh, nice. Oh, that's sad. Do you, you write your stuff? Just are you the solo writer? Yeah. Nice. Because, yeah. So don't have anything anybody behind me, but I mean it's mostly collaborating with a lot of different artists in Kansas City. Nice. Cool. Is um, that a uh, Kansas City where you're at? Yeah. Nice. Oh wow. I guess I didn't realize that you weren't in Nashville. <laughs> no. Wow, that's really cool. How did you and Mary meet? Um, I met Mary the f- when the first t- well, it took me seven about s- ten years to find to see her live. Or, mm-hmm. And so, when I was in college in Delaware, 
I took me and my friend. We went all the way up to um, Dewey Beach to see her live play. And then. Oh, wow. That's. So all dedication. Of us were, That's awesome. <laughs> all of us were in the same area. So that was kind of great. Um, awesome. Uh, let's see. Who, if, who would you want to collaborate if you got the chance to? Ooh. Like anybody? Any artist? Mm-hmm. Paul McCartney. That would be my answer. Mm. Oh, if I could pick anybody in the world. Anybody? I mean, no. I would say, uh, I would say Pink. Ooh, that's a good one. I just, I just caught her uh, concert uh, in town this past Saturday. I think it's the best show I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I've, I've been her. wanting seemingly a, such a genuine person. So uh, I feel like they would be fun to write with. Um. Well, this is just my, I mean, hero. Um. But Michael Jackson. But if, if they were live, uh, uh, honestly, Billie Eilish. I've been listening to oh, her a lot one. lately, and like, Love I really, I, I just like the things that she does, and it's it's new and it's different. Yeah, she's incredible. I was late to the game on Billie Eilish, and I just listened to her new record recently, and it's really good, really, yeah. really good. I'm like super impressed by it. Let's call her up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Who 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 would uh who would who would you want to go on tour with if you got the chance to, dead or alive? Oh, Taylor Ooh. Swift. <laughs> really, <laughs> Taylor Swift? Explain. <laughs> Uh, I mean, she has like a record breaking tour going on right now. So I feel like, she has, you know, we, we'd get in front of a, you know, a, a couple of new people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But and, and they're all they're all part of, you know, they're all gays. So, yeah, <laughs> no, it fits with us. All Taylor Swift <laughs> fans are gay. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> yeah. So. She comes. She comes to Kansas City mostly every weekend. So, oh yeah, yeah I bet. What she about you guys? Um, um, I'm still thinking. Do you, do you know, Kels? Uh, jeez. Trying to hmm. think. I mean, obviously, we've actually we've thought before. You know, like. Someone like Paramore would be a great person to tour with, or Tegan and Sarah. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Um, I really love the artist LP. Oh, I love well. LP. I mean, Billie Eilish would also be a really great person to tour with, or uh, yeah. Charlie XCX. That's yeah, I would say Billie Eilish. Um, 1975. Ooh, 1975. Oh, yeah. I take that answer. I'm stealing it. <laughs> I, I gifted it to you, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next question is, um, what's your what's what what's one of your favorite songs that you've written together? Hmm. I feel like I'm gonna have to go with Assembly Line Boys because all six of us wrote on that song and it's just so fun and I feel like the concept is kind of clever so I, yeah. I think I would pick that one it's so fun to play and so fun to sing yeah and there's a lot, a lot of things that we do in that song that I like they're like I just love like the mm. key change and like just, yeah the train beat yeah I would have to say, I know it's not everyone, not everyone contributed from the current lineup, you know, for the whole songwriting process, but I really love Enough. That one just keeps ramping up as like a really, like a, a favorite, crowd favorite, and just every yep. time we play it, the emotion just stills there while you're playing Totally. It. Mm hmm. 
that's a great song. I play it all the time. Uh, and, Thank uh, you. <laughs> and, and I also play Famous as well. Oh, nice. That, that song's a banger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, not it's trying very... to like toot our own horn or anything, but I, that was just very, like uh, pure fun. Very shut up and dance. Yeah. Mm. I, I like that feel. Mm hmm. Um, did I ask you guys how do you describe your music? Oh, I don't think so. Don't, no. Uh, I feel like what our answer nowadays is um, like indie pop rock. Um, but that's a very like it's probably that wouldn't what you call our first EP at all. <laughs> it's kind of molded and changed. But it depends on what we're writing, really. Yeah, I feel like we we kind of used to have more of a that 90s grunge meets early 2000s pop punk emo vibes. Like that was definitely what our sound used to be. But honestly, since, you know, Kelsey switched to guitar, she used to play cello and uh, I mean, the synth. So we've got we've got two guitars going now instead of just the one. And we've got um, the synth and it's just like a bigger sound. It has lended itself to like, really dancey stuff so this last album we did was kind of more like synthy dancey even i mean it definitely had some rock moments in there especially mm -hmm. with hello old friends but yeah i i would say whatever our next album is going to be um it seems like we're kind of going digging digging ooh, digging a little deep <laughs> Wow. Digging a little deeper uh, into our feels. And uh, we've we've got a song we haven't recorded yet, but we're planning on recording and it's called Rust. And that was a oh, hi, Kelsey. I figured um, that was <laughs> that's a song that um, I, st I started writing about my divorce and my wonderful bandmates came together and, and they helped finish it and um yeah w leah and i just started writing a new song that um i think is going to be really awesome and it just seems like uh the next album that we eventually put out might be a little more emotional and a little more anthemic and might make you think a little bit more instead of just being like these are dancey fun songs yeah anthemic i like the word anthemic Thank you. I made it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's a writer. <laughs> well, I did like, um, I know that you guys were on Mary's new song, Take a Number. And yeah. that was, that was, that's a, a good one too. I play that one yeah. too many times. Talk about in your feels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that song is heavy. It was really cool that she asked us to sing on that song with her. I thought it was um, really powerful. powerful. Ooh. Ooh. Jinx. I have, I have a couple more questions on here. Oh. Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's see. What do you enjoy the most of being a musician? Ooh. Um, I, well, I'll go first. Um, I love that it's gotten me out of my comfort zone and even more so than in like in the last few years, it's, I feel like it's really pushed me and, um, just really opened me up to really just, I don't know. I don't know what the word is, but uh, putting myself out there and um, just coming more comfortable with, with that and myself. And, uh, but yeah. 
I think for me, yeah. I've had um in the last decade or so, so like a love hate relationship with music. It's been it's been fun. It's been ne- necessary. It's been loving and uh, hateful. I guess I kind of said that already. But um, what sticks around about music for me is just when you do get together and create a moment with your friends and people that you enjoy being around generally um and you create a feeling together with the people you're playing with and with the the people listening um that environment that you're creating with your music and your words and your sound it's when it's done right and people are enjoying it it's a feeling that is I would consider addicting I think it's something a lot of musicians find addicting in the best way and it keeps you coming back for more mm. yeah I, I'm kind of going off what Kelsey said I feel the same way of like Goodness, I've had such a love-hate relationship with being a musician over the course of many, many, many years. But um, I always come back to it because it heals things in me that need healing. And kind of like Kelsey said, like, there's not really a better feeling than getting together with your friends and making something that you think is really cool it just feels great. Even even when we're not performing for anybody, it's just practicing and we have these moments and it's just like, oh yeah, that was really sick. This is awesome. But, you know, I, I would say, especially for fame and fiction, it's really cool to have people, you know, tell us like, hey, this song really means a lot to me. Or like, I really love this song or, hey, I've got your song playing on repeat. And then if we're going and performing a show, seeing a bunch of our friends stand in the audience singing our songs back at us, there's just like not really a much better feeling than that. Yeah. So here's another one. Would you guys ever come to Kansas City to play a show? Yes. Hell yes. Hell yes. Absolutely. Well, that'd be awesome. There's some good people in um, Kansas City. Uh, yeah, we do have a good music scene out here, though. Um. Uh, let's see what else I have on this list. Um, what's your like? What's one of your favorite systems to to use in a like a in the studio or just at home, you know, writing a song or recording a song. Oh, like like um like logic or something? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Or or just That's like a Kelsey a, question. Or like a loop, <laughs> a, loop, a loop I actually like a loop pedal or or just I, uh, whatever. I I use um you know, I got started on Studio One many years ago and I kinda just kept up with it and it's kinda transformed into something very similar to um oh my god the other the most popular software out there i can't remember the name of right now it's completely garage escaped. band no <laughs> a lot of people use pro, it. Tools. It's... pro tools yeah thank you yeah yeah studio one and pro tools are pretty similar nowadays um which is cool because you know if you're someone that kind of hops studios and if the interfaces all are starting to look the same it just makes it a lot easier for i mean a lot of musicians that do kind of hustle and hop studios or recording sessions producers um i use that for all of my string recording yeah I'll, um i use garage band a lot um i feel like most of the time over the years i've tried to write songs on guitar because I also play guitar, not very well, but I do, I can plunk around on it. Um, but yeah, I've been getting like, just kind of uninspired by that lately. So Mary actually kind of got me on to like trying to write 
while using some loops on GarageBand, and that's been pretty fruitful lately. Um, but yeah, I make a lot of demos on GarageBand, so sometimes I'll make something that's just just music, just instrumentation, and I'll be like, hey, here you go, band. Like, let me know what you think about this. Do you want to take this and run with it? And I feel like we have with a couple things. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, loop pedals can de definitely be a lifesaver. Actually, I got to thank Kristen Ford for kind of getting me into loop pedals. Oh, yeah, she's she's the loop pedal master. Do you know Kristen Ford, Dan? Uh, no, no, but the heart of her name, Mary. She's awesome. Yeah, definitely check out her music. Very prolific writer, Nashville slash L.A. writer. Yeah, she's great. And she used to be in Fame and Fiction many moons ago. So do you guys have like any um, any shows coming up in Nashville? We do. We have a very lovely fall show coming up uh, just this coming Monday, October 21st. It's going to be fall flannel themed. We're going to be selling homemade candles. We encourage everyone Ooh. to wear their best flannel and beanie hats and just uh you know hopefully the weather's still cool and it hopefully it feels very cozy i'm gonna be wearing this beanie <laughs> should we all wear beanies well that beanies cool. it's gonna get hot can't imagine kara wearing a beanie <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't think i don't think she'd be into it get her like one of those hats called with like the flaps on the side oh I'm, yes. yeah 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 <laughs> like a like a hunting hat right yeah. there's some they have those they have uh if you go to etsy they have those with the um with the um i forget the name of them but the just like little random the things on top of the hats no not cat mm. ears oh, like just yeah. like yeah. a funny ears just like a you can buy a one with a um a mofo or something. Like mohawk. <laughs> a mofo? <laughs> yeah, that you know when you have your hair stuffed up. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like oh, a mohawk. Like a oh, okay, okay. Mohawks, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Oh yeah. I think that's a fun thing, I guess. But um kind of asked all your questions but um thank you guys for taking the time and doing this with me yeah of course absolutely thank you so much for asking us to do it we really appreciate yeah, and, that and the fact that you're always you always support local i hear i see you're like always playing national artists on your station that's really cool it's really cool of you that's so rad yeah i've been i've been I'm doing a lot of um interviewing a lot of people all over the world kind of wow just that's amazing to, it's just trying to find the the best artist to do it mm -hmm. yeah well thank you for putting us in that mix yeah yeah, yeah thank you oh you're and welcome and thank you for being flexible with the time change mm -hmm. oh you're thank welcome you. well no i won't be doing anything this week so i mean normally i'm not busy during the week so gotcha okay cool but um well cool, thank but you you're welcome i'll let you know when this is all up um i'm gonna ah oh, perfect yeah i'm gonna let you guys go and then i'll let you know when it's all up awesome okay. we'll blast it yeah can't wait to share thank you okay cool thanks thank right, you see ya.